Happy to be joined by one of the fastest rising middleweights on the UFC roster. And of course, I am with Brendan All In Allen. Brendan, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Really good. Happy to have you back on the show. It's been a while since we've talked. Uh, you you uh, had your last fight in February with a huge win over over Tom Breeze. We talked about that before. Uh, and then this pandemic hit. And uh, I'm sure you're really itching to get a fight. Uh, tell me what you've been up to. Uh, have you been getting any training in uh, with your teammates a little bit more recently? Uh, yeah, man. So when I was at home, I, I, I try to take a little bit more time off now in between fights. I feel like it helps me, you know, physically, mentally. Plus, I just like being around my family. So um, I try to take a little bit time off more in between fights and not doing nothing, just relax and kind of healing a little bit. But uh, so when I was at home, you know, I normally take a month off now. It was a week, but two weeks, but now it's like a month and it, it really helps me. So I've really seen the success with it. So anyway, I stay with it. But anyway, so then the pandemic happened within like a week of being at home. So then it was really everything shut down. Um, at home in Louisiana, literally everything was shut down besides normal, like Walmart and this, and they had all the codes and the guidelines and, you know, this and that. So there was no gym. There was no nothing, no, no lifting gym, no cardio, no training, no nothing. Plus the gym I do train at when I'm at home, which is Rich Clemente's gym, his Gladiators Academy inside L, they were moving to a new location. So then it was even worse. Even if I did want to train or had a key or whatever, I couldn't because they were train they were moving. So no training. So plus, you know, we got crazy weather there. So it was raining literally for like a week at a time at one point, all week. So you can't run, you can't do nothing. And after that cleared up, I was just helping my dad put up a fence at my brother's house uh, for animals they're, they're going to get. And um, anyway, so yeah, no training, no nothing. Um, I got a call to fight Ian and then, uh, yeah, so uh, that was that was crazy. It was a fight that I really wanted, but business-wise, it just didn't make sense. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not willing to gamble as much anymore um, with timing with my wife and my daughter. I'm not willing to gamble on, especially about to go into a new contract. I'm not willing to gamble that. So uh, business-wise, I didn't take it, and it, it made me a, a mean person for about a week or so. But... Um, I guess it's just a competitor. But anyway, they called me and they asked me to fight him. They wanted me to fight him like May 30th. And this was like the first or second week of May. I told him if they push it back till June, it's still a short camp, short notice, but I'll make it work. No questions asked. I'll make it work. Um, they called me back and said that the latest they could go is June 6th. I, that gave me three weeks of training, literally coming off the couch, three weeks of training at, at here in Milwaukee and one week of cutting at, like at, at, the location which would have been in vegas it's just not a smart gamble so i was like as, as much as it sucks i can't take it um so after that point i started running the gym opened up like a week or two later so i was lifting a little bit with my father i was calling in favors with some friends to train when i could because they had finished moving the gym a week later and um so yeah i started moving everything again and uh come to find out what you know they I think it's kind of a bitch move, to be honest. I don't like him anyway. So uh, apparently they had told Gerald that they would wait a week or two after June 6th for him, but they didn't want to wait after June 6th because he's a bitch. And uh, I don't normally – I try to keep my cussing out of it, but I think that highly of him, I think he's that much of a bitch. But uh, Yeah, so um, then they called me to fight Spicely on June 20th, and – I was like, F it, let's do it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. Let's just go. They called me back the next day and said he can't fight. I didn't ask any questions. I was like, all right, what's next? Uh, we should know something by tonight. I haven't heard nothing. So I told him I'll fight at 205 or 85, but I need at least three weeks to properly and healthy, in a healthy manner, make 185 because I'm not going to kill myself to do it. Um, Still haven't heard nothing, so hopefully uh, I'll see some, I'll see some people that I know this week uh, while in Vegas, and hopefully we'll figure something out. But, this is the the most I've ever seen you frustrated. Can, can you say this is I guess the most you've been frustrated at this point in your career with wanting a fight, being ready to try to get a fight in the right fight for that matter? Man, I get honestly I get frustrated a lot with little things and stuff like that. Just no one ever sees it. Like I. 
I'm the kind of person that I got problems, you got problems, everyone's got their own problems. No one else gives a damn about it. So I'm not going to talk about it to, to anyone else. I'll talk to my family and that's about it. But nobody else cares. They got their own family problems, uh, daily life problems, work problems, whatever. So, I mean, I don't care to hear other people's problems. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I got enough of my own. So, no, I'm just, I, that fight really frustrated me. One, because I, I want to fight him. Um, I, I've never said no to a fight. And... I'm kind of in the position now where I got to be smarter. You know, it's not just about me anymore. So I got to be smarter. And uh, so it's frustrating with that aspect because honestly, I mean, like I should feel, I feel I'll beat him anywhere at any time. But is it something that I'm willing to gamble with? You know, my little one looking at me like, hey, she's got to eat. You know, my wife's got to eat. You know, you know, I got I to gotta provide that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not willing to gamble everything else that comes with it. Um, if in, in the chance that he did catch me and he did beat me, you know, I can't, I'm not willing to do that. Plus I don't like there to be any excuses when I fight, when I fight, if you beat me, you beat me, especially now where I'm at, you know, I'm there mentally. I figured it out. I'm, I'm hitting pretty much on all cylinders. I'm showing a little bit more every fight to get closer. Like I'm training, but if you beat me now, like unless something crazy happens, but you beat me, man. Like I can take that. I, I can legitimately take someone beating me if i gave it my best and that was everything i had and you beat me hey you're just better than me I, I can take that i can accept that i can go back to the drawing board and work on what i need to work on but i can't accept someone that i know that i'm better than beating me because i beat myself that freaking kills me and i'm sure any competitor that's been there and had that happen can you know they can feel the same way that i have and they they can sympathize with that so but yeah, that fight really that that one sucked. And then then when I found out that they were waiting to wait an extra week or two for him, that really pissed me off and just affirmed my suspicions that he is a bitch and you know he knows what's up. Now you just got back from a run with some of your teammates. Have you been able to get any work in uh, with GM three, your your big chin brother here, getting ready for this fight? Yeah, man, I got here what last Wednesday. And, uh, yeah, I've been helping him as much as I could, try to give him that look. Obviously, I'm bigger, but uh, um, I know the looks. I've watched him fight since he was in LFA because they blew him up like crazy. I wanted to fight him then. They told me no. Um, so it's like, man, everything's, like, keeping me away from fighting this dude. and It's, it's frustrating. But, yeah, I've been helping G as much as I can. That's, that's the only focus right now. My feelings aside towards the bitch, uh, you know, it's all for G. I'm here for G. I want G to win. I want G to succeed. I want G to get his ranking. I want him to get what he deserves. So, you know, it's just business. And I'm, I want my teammate to win. I want my teammate to beat him up. Of course. I, it's all about G right now. No, nothing for me matters, like about me, anything like that. It's about Gerald Mearshart and Ian Heinish and Gerald getting the win. That's all it's about. And uh, that's, that's all I'm here to do. I just want to help G. I want him to get this win. I want him to do it impressively. How does Gerald match up with Ian? How do you think uh, this fight's going to play out? I mean, honestly, I've told Gerald the same thing. As long as he comes out on his P's and Q's and not lackadaisical, I, I really don't see anywhere that Ian's going to do anything to him. And the way G's looking training, like, Ian's screwed, man. Like, I, I really don't. Like, and that's me not being biased. Like, I've... I obviously trained with Gerald. His ground's good. It shows in his fights. You know, he's tied for the most submission wins in middleweight division. Um, his striking's good. When he comes out and actually gets right to it or is on his P's and Q's, he's money. In the later rounds, even when he comes out slow, in the later rounds when he starts picking it up, he's he's good. His takedown defense is good. His takedowns are good. I just don't see anywhere that he can beat him other than, you know, obviously, same as everyone else is just catching him. Um but like I said, when G's on his P's and Q's, that's going to be super hard to do. So, you know, I, obviously I'm pulling for Gerald all the way. But not being biased, I, I, I still pull for G. I just I think it's just bad stylistically for Ian. And Gerald's got a lot of experience. Plus, Ian always tanks. And Gerald's a long-term fighter. He gets better as the fight goes on. So it's like if you if you really don't catch him in that first, you're going to play hell with him. Because he's just going to get better and better and better.
better and get your timing, and it just works for you. So there are two middleweight bouts on this card. It, to me, it sounds like there's no way you'd be able to, to step in and make that 185. Am I correct in assuming that just based on what you're saying right now? A little too oh, soon. Yeah. 100% I couldn't make the 85, but I mean, if they want, I'll, I'll make it at 200 if they want to just stop cutting weight somewhere through the week and get after it like that. I'm, I'm good with that. I'll make 200. So, so do you envision yourself maybe testing the waters at light heavyweight um, or do you really, would you prefer to stay down at middleweight and really make that run crack the top 15? I mean, I got to imagine you're pretty close there already. I'd like to think I'm super close to top 15. I mean, the two guys that I've beat, have you know extensive resumes and their accolades speak for themselves you know tom breeze was newcomer of the of the year over kamar usman in 2015 he has a split decision loss that could have went to him very very highly could have went to him um that was at 170 never been finished i finished him in the first round you know i can't say I, i'm not gonna say it was easy but you know i didn't really get hit too much so uh kevin holland if we're going by topology rankings, he was 21 in the world when I fought him. Short notice. Obviously, it was short notice for him, too. But he was training for someone else. I was training for someone else. He was still training. 21 in the world. Only other man to finish him was the Bellator champion, and that was a while back. He fought Tiago Santos, and everyone knows Tiago Santos' resume. Couldn't finish him. I finished him in the second. So, you know, I mean, that's just resumes and accolades that – they're facts. They're not opinions. They're, they're facts. So you've made it pretty clear in the past too. You've wanted to get uh, those losses back. And in a sense, you kind of did because uh, Kevin Holland goes and beats Anthony Hernandez. W were you surprised at that? Did you feel like that was something that you uh, was going to be the outcome or did you feel like that was a little bit of an upset? I really like Anthony as a person. And I was really, honestly, I was pulling for Anthony because obviously he, he beat me and, I, I like him as a person. I think he's a really cool, cool guy. But um, we're going off of fighting styles. No, I really didn't. But like I said, I was pulling for him. But I mean, I mean, to me, that's not justice. I'm going to do. That. I'm the type of man. I was raised to do it myself. If you want something done, do it yourself. I want to do it to myself. I want to do it myself. Like I saw Anders talking about, like he's chasing his losses. I'm a man at the end of the day. Like I'll fight you. Like I, I don't. I'm not here to talk about, oh, I can beat you. You got lucky, blah, 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 blah. I'm here to prove it. Mm -hmm. I'm not standing behind a computer or anything like that. I am a man willing to prove it. That is all personal, all business aside. That is all personal. Like, what is personal. Yeah, what did you think of Anders' uh, performance against Jocko? It was crap. Like, I, I, I really didn't see, like, Anders. Like, it didn't look like him. You know, he threw the, the, the left like he always does. He tried to kick twice, but he just held him against the cage the whole time. Like, I don't know. That's To me, that's not really him. I, I, I don't know. Like, I've seen him try that a couple of times, but he, he gets away from it eventually as the fight goes on or, or he goes into it when he's tired or vice versa, you know. But I don't know. I didn't, I didn't – maybe something was wrong. Something was hurt. I, I don't know his side of the story, but it just didn't look like him from a viewer's perspective. If you had the ability to avenge one of those losses, Anders or Hernandez, is one more appealing to you? I want them all on the same night. Like, I really don't care. Like, I truly feel that I'm better. Um, I I like the guys personally, especially Trevor and Anthony. I think they're super good dudes. But, you know, to me, this is personal. It's business. I got something to prove. They're not better. Like, I know in my heart they're not better than me. And I can say it till I'm blue in the face. But it seems like, you know, at certain times, I'm the only one willing to prove it. And I'm higher than them now. Like, if, if we're being honest, I'm, I'm higher than them. Eric just lost, or else he'd be right there with me. Um, Anthony just lost. He's kind of not right there with me. Trevin's not right there with me. But I'm even if I was the top 15 guy right now, if they come to me and say, you can fight one of these guys – with the potential of obviously losing your spot. I don't care about that spot. Like that's, that's just personal. Like it's, to me, it's like as a man, like it's, it has nothing to do with fighting. It has nothing to do with that. It's just like as a man. And I don't know, like, like I said, especially it goes back to the fact that if you beat me at my best, Hey man, good job. You, you did your thing. You were the better man. hundred percent. 
It was that. I love cool. that mindset. I, I I feel like that's the the right mindset to have, especially at the level where you're at. I mean, getting one of those losses back, especially uh, I feel like for your your soul as a man, uh, really helps you move forward, knowing that okay, you know, may, maybe I didn't have my best performance that night, but I can beat that guy. I, I get a second crack at him, and then I do beat him, and I continue to move forward. And I love the call out on Twitter of the number nine ranked fighter in the middleweight division, uh, Edmund Shabazian. Uh, tell me, how do you like that matchup? Is that something that you think could even happen no i don't think it's something that could happen but hey we had two versus 12 i mean i might as well take a crack at it because i'll yeah i'll fight him no problem um i mean i have my feelings towards him as far as fighting like i don't know the guy personally so obviously i'm not going to speak on his person personality or you know his traits or anything like that i can only speak on fighting and uh you know he's just he hasn't really been able to be tested yet I felt like he was going to have a good fight with Tavares, but, man, he, he was smart. Tavares went for the big hook, and he shot a straight right down the middle and put him on his ass. It was it was great. It was perfect. You know, that was great on him, and he played. He followed it up smart when Tavares was hurt. Hold on. And uh, he, he put the jab and threw the kick right behind it. It was just smart. Like, yeah. he seems like a smart fighter, but I don't know. I think what? I'm different. Well, when you look at the guys in the latter half of that top 15, is there anyone else that really stands out that you'd like to get in with soon? I mean, you got Antonio Carlos Jr., you got uh, Akhmedov, Tavares, Uriah Hall. There's there's a lot of good options there. Is there anyone that you feel like, you know, would make sense for you here next uh, if you don't get, uh, you know, one of those fights that we discussed earlier? Man, I've asked for, like, everyone that I could possibly think of that's smart. Like, you know, at, right after they said no to Spice, like, Spicy said no, I was like, all right, what about Trevin? never heard anything what about zach cummins i called him out on twitter and he was he was with timeline apparently which is cool i understand so i called out joku like twice or however you say his name never heard anything so and i figured obviously ian had to fight akhmedov or omari however you say his name I'm not good at that but he's overseas so obviously it's not um, that's not gonna happen um with everything going on but uh you know real i'm tr i try to be realistic like you know, they're not going to give me anything over a number 13, like I, at least in my mind. So business wise and intelligent call outs, like that's all I really have. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know what else they want. Like, yeah, obviously I'll fight anyone they got, but it's, it's like, are you going to give it to me? Do you expect to fight before this month closes out? Or do you think we're going to be seeing you step back into the cage maybe in July? Man, the way it's looking, it's looking like July, I guess. But I'm trying not to be gone from my family as long as possible. So, I, I'll, like I said, 205, I'll fight whatever ones they want. Um, I mean, because obviously they're not going to give me their top 15s or anything in there. So, obviously, it's not going to be – I'm not a small guy neither. So, I mean, I'm 6'2", 77-inch reach. Uh, I walk around at, like, 215, and that's kind of holding myself back. So, I can be bigger if I want, but I'm not a small guy and I'm not weak neither. So I don't really worry about that. So, you said you're leaving for Vegas soon. Yeah, I leave with, to Vegas with uh, Gerald tomorrow. Okay. Uh, are you, uh, are you excited to, I guess, see the restrictions and, and what the apex is going to look like? I mean, this, this whole pandemic, it's nuts. I'm sure it's going to be very different than what you're used to. Yeah. I've heard cause Duke went out with Tyron this past weekend. So we kind of know it and, you know, I fought at Apex, so I feel like it's going to be kind of similar to that. They just changed the where where they're walking out from, and they have music. So, other than that, I think it's going to be pretty con, uh, pretty similar to Contender. You know, they got the same 25 foot cage and everything. So, I, I got to ask you too about Tyron. What where, where do you think he's at at this point in his career? You know, for me personally, I was really looking forward to this fight against Burns, especially after you know Tyron fought uh, and, and lost to Usman and I. I if I'm going to be totally transparent, I was a little disappointed with, with Woodley. I, I felt like, you know, he, he was, he's still not the same fighter that we've seen in, in the past. Is, is there something different with him? You think it's a mindset thing? What, what are we seeing when we see the former champ step into the cage now? Man, I, I honestly don't know. I think like this, in my personal opinion, I can't speak on what's in Tyron's mind. So I think there's still that pressure. Like, man, I got to win. Like, man, I got to win. Like, he looked great. He didn't cut much weight, like, like far as the week of. 
I felt like it, from him talking, his mindset sounded good. So, you know, I, I guess it's just like I said, that pressure that's like, man, I got to win. I got to do this, whether it's for his family or for himself or whatever the case may be. I still feel like there's some like pressure there. And I've, I put myself there with both of my title fight losses for LFA. So I can't even imagine the pressure that he's feeling with a UFC belt and losing it and coming back and everything that surrounds him with that. So that's, that's my opinion. But with that being said, I'm a, I'm a Gilbert Burns fan. Like I was, I was a fan of his, like after watching him fight when he fought Gunnar Nelson and he took that fight on short notice. Um, I said then that he would be a contender or a champion soon. And if he did obtain it, he would hold it for a while. I like his style. I like how he fights. I like how he comes forward. He throws and he throws big. He's tough. He can take a shot and he's got good jujitsu. Like, and obviously he just showed his wrestling is pretty good as well. So I feel like he's kind of the complete package. And I think people were sleeping on him a lot until here recently. So, I mean, I'm a fan. I, like I said, I think he's going to be champion. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see who the UFC matches him up with next. If it is his training partner, Usman, and they, they make that as, as the next title shot, wow. I, I mean, MMA fans are going to be licking their chops. Brendan, give me give me one or two fights this weekend that you're really looking forward to outside of, of the GM3 uh, Ian fight. Mm, that's tough. Uh, I know I'm looking at uh, Al Jermaine and uh, Sanhagen. I like Sanhagen. Uh, I think he's tough. I think he's one of those guys you look at and you're like, no, he's not a fighter. And then he fights and you're like, damn, that dude can really fight. So I like that. I like that matchup. And I don't say I haven't even looked at the card too hard. Um, I don't even know. There's I, some fights. You got the champ. Uh, you know, Amanda Nunes, the the woman's goat. She's going in there against Felicia Spencer. That's a great main event. Uh, you got uh, Rocco Martin and Neil Magny at uh, welterweight bout on the main card. I'm looking forward to that one. I like uh, the coach. Yes. Yes. Like so, yeah. So He's a, I like that fight too because a lot of people sleep on him too, Sun Sao. But it's going to be interesting to see how Cody comes from you know what he's been doing, changing his training. So it's going to be interesting. Can he fix keeping his chin high, or has he learned to tuck it and throw? Because he's got the speed. He's got the he's got the necessities and things. He's just you know to to me from an outside perspective, it just looks like minor details just here and there, minor details. Mm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see that one, too. Yeah, well, it's going to be a great card. I'm looking forward to it very much. Um, before I let you go, I, I do want to ask you uh, about the, the George Floyd situation. I know a lot of athletes are, are really speaking out, especially white athletes, uh, as what's going on. I'm sure, I mean, you got plenty of, of African-American uh, training partners, uh, you know, at your gym, and I, I'm sure plenty of friends. What is your overall take on this? What do you feel like, you know, we as a country should be doing moving forward to, um, you know, make sure this doesn't happen uh, anymore? I mean, if we're going from George Floyd, just just him, not not including everything else that's been happening. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm 100 percent pro police. I worked at a police department. I have a criminal justice degree. Me and my friends, family, whatever, are police. With that being said, there are good apples and there are bad apples. I just feel the bad apples get the bigger media attention than anything else, because here recently people try to show the other side of, you know, from my view of what I've seen and I try to stay away from it hundred percent. I don't like getting into all that stuff. It's not, nothing good comes out of it, but it seems like it was a white cop against a uh, African American male. That's what it's, that's what it seems like. But as soon as someone shows that being done white to white or white to Hispanic or Hispanic to any other, any other combination that you put, it gets no media attention whatsoever. So, I mean, it, like if we're going back to the police standpoint, which all started it, he's a hundred percent. He deserves to, to be tried for murder. Hundred percent. No other. No other way. He murdered that man. A hundred percent. He abused his power, and murdered that man. Everyone around that was watching that didn't say nothing or do anything, they deserve to be tried on wh whatever manslaughter, accessory, abuse of power, whatever you want to get them for. They deserve to. Um, I feel like there should be stricter guidelines and processes to find police like i don't feel like anyone should just be able to come and do it and they are trying to make it make it harder at least where i come from as far as you know higher agencies like state police with you have to have a college degree and things like that or experience 
but that or experience, you know, it still leads to, okay, I don't know nothing, but I go be the police at Humpty Dumpty police department and then go put on, it just, I feel like there should be a stricter guideline and a stronger process to pick these guys. Cause there are, there's a lot of cops that are in there for the right reasons that are there to help their community that don't want to see this crap. But then there are guys out there that just do it because they were bullied in high school or whatever. So if we go to the police aspect, I feel like there should be stronger ways to find police or to weed out the bad ones. I don't know how. I, that's, I'm not a professional. I don't know how, but that's just my opinion. And it, just for that man, like, yeah, he was murdered 100 percent. Like he the, the, the police officers need to be tried for that. And. You know, it's getting a lot of like, like that I see as like immigrants as far as African-American males are suppressed or whatever. But I think personally, and like I said, I don't like getting into all this, but it's a lot of immigrants. It's not just African-Americans at all. Like I have a lot of Hispanic Mexican friends that their family members go through the same thing. Their friends go through the same thing, you know, so, you know. Um, Chinese as well, whatever, immigrants from everywhere, not just African Americans, you know. But that's just my take. I think like everyone and everyone always says the only way to do it is come together. It's hard to come together when certain people feel this certain stance and they're willing to die behind that stance. And the media doesn't help whatsoever. The media to me is like the biggest downfall in the whole country. Like, I mean. They even showed it with one of the riots where they were trying to break into CNN and like within minutes, like they had police there, but screw all the businesses for all the people that are trying to make a living. But hey, we're going to protect CNN because that's a media outlet that pushes what we want. So, I mean, I don't know. I just feel I, like the I appreciate your take on it, man. I mean, it, it's definitely a, a, a difficult topic to, to talk about, and it's it's sad, all the things that's going around uh, in, in the country right now. Hopefully, we can find a, a way to move forward and um, be more peaceful and, and not see a, a lot of this uh, brutality that, that's going on to, to uh, minorities and whatnot. Hey, uh, safe travels to Vegas. Uh, I wish you and your team uh, nothing but the best down there. Uh, and I can't wait to have you back on. Hopefully we can do it again before you actually book your next fight. Uh, before I let you go, just uh, you know, plug your social media or anyone you want to thank. As always, the floor is yours. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, as always, I just want to thanks to my team, man. Uh, Ruben Sport, um, everyone here that helps me. Big biggest thanks as always to my family and you know my sponsors back home and everywhere. You know, I got um, K Ray Construction, Perfect Sports. Um, supplements they really they really helped me out a lot um you know i'm probably missing i'm gonna miss some and i'm just blank right now but uh you know turp house all, i have a lot more probably but i'm just drawing blanks right now but those are my three that like really always no matter what are helping me sending me stuff um and perfect sports actually just uh got their line out to the united states so check them out as well um as always, Turp House is always crushing it, putting out good stuff. And, uh, you know, K-Ray right back home really helps me out. They, they build some good houses. So, Awesome. Well, hey, as always, thank you for the time, my friend. Again, safe travels, and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Have a good one.